My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I'll be one of my friends that's trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. If you want to know where our economy's headed, now that 200,000 Americans have died from COVID, you only need to look at today's action. Dow gaining 140 points, S&P advancing 1.05%, but the NASDAQ surging 1.71%. The market perfectly reflected everything is going right, but totally obscured everything that's going wrong. Yeah, it's a tale of two cities again, to a tale of two cities economy. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. But on up days, we focus on the best and ignore the rest. What do I mean by that? Okay, let's start by going over the winners today to see what they're trying to say. You have to divine them. They speak to you. The stars of retail tell the story of this contorted economy better than anything I know. The most important winner? Well, of course, it's going to be Amazon. This morning, an analyst at Sanford Bernstein, who'd missed nearly the whole rally here, took the recent pullback as an opportunity to upgrade it from hold to buy. It was very significant. Now, I liked everything in this report, from the mea culpa up front, I always approve of that, to the patience. You see, it, it, he waited for a double-digit decline before he pounced. Most people were fleeing on a double-digit decline, not him. I like that. In recognition of the incredible strength in Amazon Prime, coupled with rapid delivery, and the flywheel approach, he says, buy Amazon. Was there anything really revelatory in this note? Actually, yes. You can make the same arguments about Amazon even if the pandemic would end tomorrow. The problem with Amazon, though, is that it's a very much a Dickensian zero-sum company. Anything they win, any market share they take, does often come at the expense of the brick-and-mortar competition. When you see the stock of Amazon flying up nearly 6% today, I want you to consider it to be creative destruction. The destruction of all the stores that lack convenience, that are stunted by social distancing, and that will ultimately fold if they don't get some help from Washington. Next winner is Ralph Lauren, up more than 5%. Okay, what drove this move? Was it better sales? Are you magnificent earnings? No, they fired 3,700 people, or 15% of their workforce, as the company shifts from a more mall-based company to a more internet-based strategy. Good news for the market, but real bad news if you work for a living. And again, in keeping with this notion of being not in brick and mortar. Third is Lululemon. Here's a company that makes expensive clothes that you're not meant to wear at, the work, at work, unless you're a yoga instructor, you're working from home. When I looked like, when it looked like we had COVID contained, Lulu stocks started to get hammered. But now that the virus is making a comeback, so is Lululemon, up 6% today. I recommended it last week. I stand by my recommendation. Fourth, Nike. Tonight, we got a quarter that was so strong as to have buyers clamoring for a stock up a dozen points. Sounds great, right? But what led the quarter? It was China, which is far ahead of us when it comes to the pandemic. So we can be thrilled about Nike, but America isn't driving the bus, particularly physical store Nike, just like physical store Ralph Lauren. No. Hey, you want a real hardcore shift in retail? I got a wild one for you. I want you to check out Facebook, which rallied nearly 3% because we're now getting a sense that e-commerce facilitation business, Facebook shops, which could be enormous, and it's going to help the disenfranchise. I really approve of this. Oppenheimer boosted its price target from $270 to $300, arguing that the shop's business could ultimately generate $25 to $50 billion in revenue. Again, that's all about e-commerce, small and medium-sized business. At the expense of brick and mortar, they will all be ambassadors for Facebook one day. Now, with household net worth at the highest level ever, according to the Federal Reserve, maybe you would think the consumers will have plenty of money left over to shop all over the place. I see not so fast. Those household wealth gains are from stocks. And I bet the bulk of that money stays in the market. In short, retail is still mostly a zero-sum gain. Same goes for the restaurants. I want you to look at today's winners. Chipotle, well, the stock rallied another 28 bucks because that is a fantastic strategy for takeout and delivery. Forget indoor dining. They're making roughly the same amount of money as they did pre-pandemic thanks to their Chipotle lanes. Hey, by the way, they're also getting big breaks on rent because landlords desperately need to keep tenants who can actually pay. Ha! Huh. Other side of the coin? Sizzler. I always liked Sizzler. Nice, cheap steakhouse with a 62-year legacy. Didn't always come with, you know, wasn't always doing as well as I'm doing. You know, I, hey, you go to Sizzler when you're done. I, okay, when I was living in my car, I loved Sizzler. How's that? 
Okay, today the corporate parent company, not the franchises, filed for bankruptcy. Why? The President Sizzler made it crystal clear, and I quote, our current financial state is a direct consequence of the pandemic's economic impact due to long-term indoor dining closures and landlords' refusal to provide necessary rent abatements. Tough to run a steakhouse right now. It's the opposite of what we heard from Chipotle, right? In stark contrast, Darden reports on Thursday, and unlike Sizzler, the parent company of Olive Garden has a powerful balance sheet, which means it can survive the COVID economy even if its steakhouses are not delivering right now. Yes, they can get through to when we have a vaccine. They'll be able to do it. Sure, there are some smaller retailers, I'm um, smaller restaurants that can still compete, but you just wait until it gets cold and windy outside. With no outdoor dining and heavily restricted indoor dining, most of this industry will be sadly out of luck. Darden, though, their restaurants will still be here when the pandemic's over. Most of their competitors will be gone. No wonder the stock's been so strong going into quits quarter Thursday. It's the last person standing. Next up, we're hearing about the remarkable bull market in housing, spurred by a shortage in homes. But that's also zero sum. There's a shortage of homes in the suburbs. And, the, and, and by the way, also in the country, away away from the cities, because people are fleeing from the cities and work at home. Landlords aren't ready for it. Neither are the banks that have lent them money, which is why the bank stocks can't get out of their own way. In a world where you don't have to commute into the office, Zoom video reigns supreme. And same goes for the cybersecurity needed if you're using Zoom, Zscaler, Palo Alto, CrowdStrike, Okta, Kramer family fave. Because people who work remotely are a lot more vulnerable to hackers. Again, though, the flip side of this is really ugly. Look at the headline from today's Wall Street Journal. Bonds related to hotels office face pressure. The banks own a lot of that debt, too, and can't get rid of it. So once again, buyers swap into financial technology, names like Square and PayPal, and get out of traditional banks, even if they're recommended, pushed, whatever. The offsets here are extraordinary. They are just, they just, they're, they're just not visible. I mean, yeah, we can see Lenar's fabulous sales, but how do you gauge the stress of a landlord? Mostly, you only pick this up from the credit markets, and we are buyers of stocks, not credit. What else? When it looks like we had the, vi- the virus contained, some of our favorite cloud stocks kept rolling over. And I'm going to give you two classic examples. Adobe, which facilitates e-commerce, or DocuSign, which is how you close on a contract remotely. Now, both stocks got pulverized after, after excellent quarters. I invite both companies to come back now that things are better and tell their story rather than focus on the stock going down. Cases are spiking, so Adobe and DocuSign are roaring again. I bet they can go back to their old highs. With all these people moving to the suburbs, you got or in the country, you got a lot more demand for cars. But they don't seem to want new cars. That's how a contactless used car retailer like Carvana could pre-announce such a spectacular quarter. One that sent the stock skyrocketing up 30%, in part because it's so heavily shorted. So many guys bet against these. We, <laughs> whatever. Even the bulls didn't expect it to be this good. This is the new normal until we get a vaccine. Every time we try to reopen, the virus comes right back. It's the bars and the restaurants, people. We know this because other countries have gone through the same thing. In the U.K., in Spain, in Israel, cases started spiking again a few weeks ago, uh, ago. We now have 17 states where the numbers are on the rise, and it's getting worse. Remember, it is the caseload. It's not the deaths, thank heavens. It's the case. So stop telling me, Jim, you're looking at the wrong numbers. We have universities where it seems to be out of control, and a lot of these students are being sent home to their parents. We're not... Pete, we're not China, okay? Where they're not going to, they can put you in jail if you go out when you shouldn't. Again, the visible stories are almost all positive. The negative stories are mostly hidden, at least when it comes to the stock market. The losers are being crushed by the virus. The winners either benefit from it or can survive it to come out the other side with fewer rivals. Let me give you the bottom line here. You can't see it from the stock market, which has more winners than losers on a day like today, because that's because the losers are too small to be public, and that's who the government needs to be ready to protect as it gets cold. And the weak, by no fault of their own, can't make it through to the promised vaccine land. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.